High energy wave dynamics in nearshore environments make it difficult and expensive for oceanographers to collect data in these regions, forcing them to rely on infrequently spaced offshore buoys. But what if there was a way to collect data in these areas? Because surfers are often in the coastal areas that these scientists are interested in studying, scientists have begun developing the SmartFin, a surfboard fin with embedded sensors. The smartphone contains Bluetooth, GPS, a temperature sensor, and an inertial measurement unit. The IMU allows the smartphone to collect data related to acceleration, angular velocity, and compass heading. In order to make the raw information collected by the smartphone useful to oceanographers, they need an accurate and robust data processing framework to calculate wave parameters such as significant wave height, wave direction, and wave frequency. Let's meet the smartphone team members who are making this happen. Hi, I'm Jasmine, and I'm calculating significant wave height and wave period. There are two main methodologies that we use to calculate wave height and wave period. The first is called wave train analysis. In wave train analysis, we observe individual waves. We can use wave train analysis to convert time-based acceleration signals into displacement signals. Then we can do a statistical analysis of the surfer's vertical displacement to determine the average significant wave height over the entire surf session. The second method is called spectral analysis. Spectral analysis differs from wave train analysis in that we look at the entire signal as a whole rather than at individual waves. In spectral analysis, we convert the time-based acceleration signal into frequency domain-based displacement signals using the fast Fourier transform. We can then find the peak frequency present in the signal to determine the wave period. Hi, I'm Howard, and I'm calculating wave direction. Besides wave height, period, and frequency, Wave direction is also an essential aspect of wave behavior that we need to quantify and model. This new model I created uses the raw magnetometer values given by the SmartFin's 3D compass and scales this vector using the accelerometer values. Once we have an array of these 3D values, we can easily plot the azimuth and altitude. Then, averaging these azimuth values over the entire trip, we should theoretically get the average direction of waves for that trip. To test the accuracy of my model, I used the SmartFin data we collected on May 15th and compared it to CDIP's standardized results for the same day. Overall, the error was only 1.61%. Extrapolating further, I tested my model on real surf data using Python machine learning models to label different surf behavior, such as floating, paddling, wiping out, and more. Then I filtered out the data when the surfboard was floating on the water and applied my model to this selection. My results were heading of 195 degrees southwest. Hi, I'm Sam Britt, and I'm working on SmartFin dead reckoning problem. Since the GPS does not work underwater, it is necessary for us to create a model that predicts the movement of the surfer by utilizing the IMU data we collected in a process called dead reckoning. We first use our rotation matrix in order to transform the acceleration vectors from the IMU's frame of reference to the Earth-centered, Earth-fixed coordinate frame, ECF for short. We then double integrate the acceleration vector to get displacement. We then use this displacement and direction movement in order to predict the next location of the surfer from the current position. Hey, I'm Brendan, and I'm working on the orientation of the SmartFin. In order to create a robust model that can accomplish the aforementioned subgoals, we have produced a way of determining the SmartFin's orientation throughout the duration of each surf session. Here, we can see that we have aligned the SmartFin with the inertial reference frame to be able to interpret the data. The way that we do this is through mathematical analysis of accelerometer, gyroscopic, and magnetometer data to create rotation matrices whose individual elements are populated with quaternions. These rotation matrices are manipulated along with the IMU data to configure the IMU for the purposes of dead reckoning and wave analysis. Overall, we hope the SmartFin project helps scientists collect data in these areas by giving surfers a tool to crowdsource the data collection process.